the United States Steel Hour, live from New York. Only steel can do so many jobs so well. This trademark, USS, stands for Quality Steel, United States Steel. This play is called Bang the Drum Slowly, which I, Henry Wigan, uh, wrote first as a book, and now I made a show out of it for the television by myself, with no help from nobody. I wrote all the words uh, that everybody speaks and everything, uh, so if anybody says that one thing or another didn't happen in real life exactly the way you're going to see it, well, all I can say is they seen it the way they seen it, and I seen it the way I seen it. But uh, before we start, though, uh, there's one thing I gotta tell you, and that is, uh, we don't have too much room in the studio here. So once in a while, you're gonna have to use your imagination quite a bit. Thank you. Oh, yes, one, uh, Holly, who is my wife, uh, she says that there, there might be some people who don't know who I am from a lamppost. Uh, so I better tell you, which I'll do right now and get it over with. Uh, what I am is a left-hand pitcher for the New York Mammoths. 52 was my best year. I won 26 games, uh, and I was voted most valuable player and player of the year both. But uh, this play, it's not about me. It's about my roommate on the road, Bruce Pearson. Now, uh, at the time, uh, I want to tell you about, Bruce was what you call third string catcher for the Mammoths, which means that uh, uh, he might uh, catch five, six games a year, but mostly he just warms up pitchers in the bullpen and uh, he pinch hits now and then. What? You know what? Can't you see I'm busy? If you spit against the wind near the building, you get an ink curve almost every time if the wind don't change on yeah, you. Yeah, that's very interesting, Bruce. I'm glad to hear that. In curve! Arthur? I heard you, Bruce. It was an in curve. I did it again. Look, what, do you think that's interesting? Now, what do I care how your spit hooks? Well, it all depends on how the wind changes. I know. But see, you don't have to tell me every time how you made out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? I don't know. Look, a million times I told you, don't laugh, see, unless you know what for. Well, you laugh. Boy, a million times I told you, and I never even made a dent. Don't you listen to anybody? Arthur. Don't call me Arthur. I didn't know I was laughing. The word is author, see, which they named me because I wrote a book. And that's what the word means, is author, not Arthur. I didn't even know I was laughing. It just come out. You know what you'd make a real good one of? Huh? A tax collector for the Bureau of Internal Revenue. They don't listen to anybody either. Want to hear what I just wrote them? Dear sir, I figured out the whole secret. The way to make more money is to make less, and the way to go broke is to get rich. <laughs> In curve. What's the use? They don't read what you write them anyway. Some pitcher, I can't even hit a wastebasket. Out curve! What? The wind changed on me. Well, uh, that's about as complicated as our conversations ever got with each other. Now, uh, the next thing that I gotta show you is uh, how Bruce stood on the club with the other fellas. 
Oh, and especially with Dutch. Yeah, that's Dutch over there, Dutch Snell, who you all know is manager of the club. Well, anyway, what I got to show you is uh, is one day just after we lost the game to Washington. Pearson, where's Pearson? Pearson, Dutch wants you. Hey, Pearson, he's got to know how tall you are. Oh, that's Me? so funny, boy. So what makes you so funny? No, no kidding, he's got to know, exactly. Yeah, it's very important. I don't know, six two and a quarter, I six, think. Six two and a quarter, how about that? I didn't know they piled garbage that high. Ha! Did you sign for a curve that last pitch, huh? What, what? Yes, sir. Would you mind if I ask you how come? Did I miss a sign? Yeah. It would seem that way to me. It would appear that you did, since I personally seen Raguski flashing you to sign for a fastball just as plain as day. I was looking at Simpson. Why? Is he more beautiful to look at, huh? Well, what? I guess I thought it was an odd inning instead of an even inning. I, I guess that's what I'd done. What do you think they both scoreboards for, huh? What, what? Count by odds. Sir? One, three, five, seven, nine. What do you call those? Odd numbers or even? Yes, sir. Odd numbers! Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I keep talking. I might as well save my breath. Here's a kid with a million dollar promise. Got one of the finest arms in baseball, bar none. But you know what he's worth to this club? Do you? Do you, huh? What, what? Two cents on delivery. You want to know why? Because you got no brains, and a ball player without brains ain't no ball player at all. Quiet. Now I'm going to give you something to remember. Hi, Dutch. Piney Woods. Can you remember that name? Now that's the name of a kid I got my eye on. You remember that person? Because he's a catcher. And this coming spring down in Florida, if he turns out to be halfway decent. Halfway! I'm going to get rid of you so fast you won't know what hit you. He just acts rough and tough, but underneath, there is a tender heart of pure gold. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's pretty funny, Arthur. Well, that's what they wrote about you in the Saturday Evening Post. I just read it. Well, I hope you enjoyed talking about it, because it just cost you 50 bucks. What? And another 50 for being so surprised about I it. I wasn't that surprised. What do you think, you're a person? Not to me. To me, you're one left arm. You're my power. You're a 325 batting average. I tied a whole lot of you in a sack and dump you in the river if I could and keep the parts I needed. You know the one thing that makes me sick? People. That's why I'm a winner. Now, anybody got any more jokes? Not at them prices. <laughs> Good. I hope you learned something. Well, that was the situation, like they say. Which just about brings me now uh, to where the story I'm telling about Bruce begins with. The time uh, is about uh, eight months later, and it is 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, Holly and me, we was just laying around the house, and uh, she was reading up on one of those books that tells you how it feels when you're expecting. <laughs> but she didn't have to read at all. I mean, if you ask me, because she already was. But she's like that, you know. She's always reading up on things. You're going to change the whole system of taxation all by yourself. I'm not writing to them. Good book? Well. What's new on the $600? Well, there's one thing. Now, it, it says there that any future father that refers to his future offspring only in terms of the tax deduction is going to make a horrid father and he should be barred from the union. <laughs> Hey, that's a good word, Horde. I think I'll use that. You like this? Dear Mr. Moores, I, Henry Wigan, hereby return these contracts, being very mad and insulted at what you consider me worth for this coming season in baseball. It is also horrid. I am not signing these contracts, as you can plainly see, and never will. Sincerely, Henry Wigan. P.S. I was taught in school where slavery went out when Lincoln was shot. You think that's strong enough? That's Mr. Moore's right now. See, he's calling me up to tell me that he made a mistake and he sent the wrong contracts, and would I please excuse him and not get mad that's about it? That's probably the butcher calling to say he ran out of calves living. No. I don't want them to think that I come running the minute they snap their fingers.
Triborough Bridge. I have a collect call for Mr. Henry Wiggins from Rochester, Minnesota. Will you accept the charges? Rochester? Operator, I don't know a soul out there. Besides, look, I never accept collect calls from nobody under any circumstance. Come on, Arthur. Bruce? Bruce. What are you, in jail? What are you doing in jail? I'm not in jail. Do you accept charges, sir? Arthur? Well, look, if you're not in jail, what are you doing in Rochester, Minnesota? Mr. Wiggins? You gotta come see me, Arthur. Do you accept the charges? What did you do? I'm in the hospital. Will you come see me? I can't let you talk if you won't accept the charges. You gotta come see me, Arthur. Bruce, look, I, I can't afford it. I'm up to my neck and tax arrears as it is. Hello, sir. Do you accept charges? All he says is I gotta go see him. What does he do? He's in the hospital. Well, then you gotta go. Arthur? Listen, will you accept charges or not? You have to tell me yes or no. Say, Bruce, I'll come see you, okay? Okay. Bye. Hello, Bye. sir. Sir, hello, sir. Hello. Mr. Wiggins, you've got to accept the charges. You already spoke to him. Are you Henry Wiggins? Henry Wiggins, you got the wrong number, operator. Well, um, all I threw was one suit in the, into the suitcase because naturally I had no idea and I hopped this plane for Rochester, Minnesota. Well, when I got to the hospital, I could have found Bruce's room without even asking, because you can smell this awful shaving lotion he uses about a mile away, almost. Howdy! Howdy? What do you mean, howdy? I thought you are sick. What? This is sick running up and down the hall yelling howdy at everybody? How are you, Arthur? Don't call me Arthur! If you trade in some of these gallon jugs of shaving lotion on a bar of soap sometime and wash out your ears, you might hear something. And how's Holly? Holly's fine. Well, that's fine. You know how much it cost me to come up here, don't you? I'm not even sure it's deductible. Uh, I'm sorry, Arthur. I didn't want to call you only... Well, I can't get out of here without a friend or somebody. I, I was even in here for Christmas. What for? I never seen you look so good in your whole life. Well, I got a bum deal, Art. I hope you won't laugh. Well, oh, what have I got to laugh about? I'm doomed. Well, I owe the Bureau of Internal Revenue like about 40 quarts of blood, and I'm liable to never play baseball again rather than to play for slave wages. So don't worry. Now, I'm not going to do any laughing for some time to come, I guarantee you. What do you mean, doomed? Well, I got it wrote down here someplace. They said they want to talk to you themselves, and tell you what to do when it happens until the doctors come and what doctors to call to in all them different towns. Blood? What is this disease? I never heard of it. Well, it's kind of fatal. Well, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I heard what you said. And uh, I, I know what the word means as good as the next guy. My head is going around and I can't seem to think what it means. You know what I mean? It means I'm doomed. Look, I know what it means. Don't you think I know what it means? Fatal. See, the word means fatal. I know what it means. You want some water? Just uh, tell me something. Now, don't you think it would just be simpler to bring the pitcher over here instead of running up and down like a madman? Drink the water. I can get all the water I want. I got three doctors. Oh, three phonies, if you ask me. No, they give me tests and You're everything. Some doctors. Uh, three monkeys I doubt could even fix a case of warts. Oh, Arthur. Look, if you was a, an atom bomb or something, uh, they would have figured out something a long time ago. I guarantee you. Arthur, you got to calm down. I'm doomed. We got to listen to what they tell us. Well, how long do they give you? Well, they can't tell it. Six months or a year, or maybe tomorrow. It's just something you can't tell. Boy, this is some weather you got up here. What is it, about 50 below? Arthur, that's all I need is a cold now. You think Dutch will get rid of me? What do you mean, get rid of you? Well, I sure hate it if he did. Hey, 
Look, Bruce, did you, uh... Did you tell anybody about this? I mean, what you got? I couldn't think of anybody else to tell. Well, that's something. Because, you know, you know one thing, and we both know one thing for sure, and that is, if Dutch finds out what you got, boy, he's going to get rid of you in about two seconds. If he don't find out, you got a chance. Well, I won't tell him. Well, I, look, I know you won't, see, and I won't neither, but we can't tell nobody. I won't tell nobody. the minute you tell one person, then everybody knows, and it's going to get back to Dutch sooner or later. I didn't even want to tell you. What do you mean you didn't want to tell me? Well, you know. No, no, I don't know. Well, you know, if people think you're going to die, they're going to be nice to you and them. So what are you making a face about? What is it, terrible if people treat you nice? No, it just makes me nervous. Well, well, let me tell you something. You know, just because everybody knows you're going to die does not necessarily mean that everybody's going to treat you nice because everybody knows that everybody is going to die sometime. Does everybody go around treating everybody nice to wise up, will you? Were you mad? Boy, this is some world, if you ask me. I say, turn a madman loose and leave him blow it up. Arthur? What? You want some more water? This is the United States Steel Hour. Now a word from George Hicks. Here's a typical modern American home. Looks peaceful and safe. And here's a familiar scene inside a typical U.S. steel plant. Looks quite different, doesn't it? Well, I've got news for you. U.S. steel workers are safer on the job than the average American family is right in its own home. The reason is simple, and it should be a powerful safety lesson to all of us. Safety in U.S. steel plants is no accident. It's a serious business that involves constant vigilance, cooperation, and safety training. The very phrase, safety first, originated with U.S. steel over 50 years ago. How safe are U.S. steel workers? Well, let's check out. Last year, U.S. Steel's Columbia Geneva Division steel plants, with almost 10,000 employees, established the amazing record of only three lost time accidents for every four million man hours of work. That's right, only three per four millions. How is this amazing record achieved? The answer is a constant program of safety training. Here at this Pittsburgh, California plant, Two huge signs greet U.S. steel workers on arrival. Other safety reminders, such as this mirror, greet them just before they actually go on the job. After they're on the job, their supervisors call safety huddles, like this one. Other meetings are held regularly between foremen and their superintendents to give and receive suggestions on specific safety problems. Mr. Hinckley, will you tell our audience why this plant has such an outstanding safety record. Sure, George. It's for the same reasons that U.S. Steel has won the nation's top industrial safety awards four years in a row. The right type of tools and safety equipment. Good housekeeping. And most important of all, the enthusiastic cooperation of our fellow employees. Getting into the safety habit, not only on the job, but on the road, and taking safety home to their families. I'm sure if every home in America made safety a working habit, as it is at U.S. Steel, there would be far fewer unnecessary accidents with all the pain, grief, and expense that go with it. Indeed, safety is never an accident. Well, uh, we skip now down to Florida. Uh, well, the rest of the club was in spring training. That is, uh, everybody except me. All I'd been doing for three whole months was waiting for old man Moores to, to call up on the telephone and talk contract, but uh, he, he never done so till... Well, finally, one day, I got so jumpy that I just had to go down to the clubhouse, even though I knew it's the worst thing to do when you're holding out because it makes you look too anxious, which I was. 
Ray. Hi, you are, sir. Look at him, Mick. You got that anxious gleam in your eye. No kidding. Do I look gleamy? Mick, man, are you putting on weight? Yeah, I know. I, uh, I figure I'll come around and uh, let him see how fat I'm getting, and then maybe old man Moores will give me a call on the telephone. Hey, has anybody seen Bruce? He's around here somewhere. Hey, let him see eating peanuts. Them goobers packed you up a pound a bag. Yeah, I know. I got some. Okay, I heard you. Anybody got a spare part? Sure, I wouldn't be caught dead without a few spare motorcycle parts on me. Who's that? Well, uh, according to the papers, that's Dutch as Good Hope. From Good Hope, Georgia. You mean that's Piney Woods? I think I'm in trouble with my master distributor. You're going to have trouble with your head. Dutch sees you in here with that motorbike. Well, now, what am I going to do? They told me I can't leave it outside. Uh, what do you do, Good Hope? Run bases on that thing? I'll put it in the shower. Oh. Boy, we sure get some corkers. Hey, look, is he any good, that guy? Hey, he's plenty good, just out of his mind, that's all. Hey, Arthur! Come on. All right, all right, all right. What do you call this? You Are guys you on vacation? Fine? Get out there. Hey, uh, Pearson, take off that gear. Where's that... Where's that new kid? Piney, uh, Piney, what's his name? Piney Woods. Where's he hiding? You call me, sir? Yeah. Get out there. You're working today. So long. It's been good to know you. So long. It's been good to know you. Hey, watch it, will you? What's the matter with you? Oh, maybe he's getting in the mood. You gotta be in the mood to talk to the newspaper clucks. <laughs> You're gonna be the one to break Babe Ruth's record this hey, year. What do you say? Let's go out there. Come on, let's go, let's go. Hey, Brady, now how tall are you exactly? No kidding, Dutch has gotta know. He's six two and a quarter, exactly. No, how about that? I didn't know they piled garbage that high. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Get the lead out. Come on, run out there. Hiya, Dutch. What's your name? Wigan? I got no Wigan listed here. You sign with this club? Look, I just want to... If you're not signed with this club, you must be some kind of a tourist or something. Is that right? No tourists allowed in this clubhouse. Hey, are you going to get rid of Bruce? What do I have to do, clear it with you? No, I'm just asking, Dutch. I... Oh, I see. That's very nice, very nice. Keep it up, Wigan. I've seen wise guys before, wise guys themselves, right out of baseball. You gonna sang with me or get fat and ruin me, huh? What, what? Come on, run out there, get out there, get the lead out. Let's go, let's go. You know the way you get an idea sometime? Only you figure it's, it's too crazy, and you sort of shove it way back in your head. Well, that's the kind of idea that I got right then. Only the more that I kept shoving, the more it wouldn't shove. new in the six hundred dollars still kicking yeah what's he got to kick about oh he's practicing slides he's got on next door hey is, is that bruce him and that stick who else drags a stick around listen did you ask him again no i told you he won't stay here now, why not? We got plenty of room. I told you. He's afraid you, you might see in your bathrobe or something. Hi, you're late tonight. Arthur, if you was on one club and I was on another club, what kind of book would you keep on me? I'll get some uh, cheese. Arthur? Well, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't keep no book on you. I mean, because you don't keep no book on nobody. Well, how would you know that? Oh, all right. Say you just struck out. See, I'm watching you, and I know what you're thinking. Well, you ain't thinking, 
What kind of pitch did I throw you? You're thinking about food or, or a pretty girl with a pair of legs. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, I couldn't do that. Even if I figured out the pitch, I could never remember it. Look, you don't have to remember it. Just write it down. Arthur, can a person develop brains? Develop? Look, Bruce, everybody's got brains. It's just some people don't use them, that's not, all. Not me. I don't have any. Sure you do. I mean, all you need is confidence. Well, I don't have that either. Well, I mean, you could have if you wanted to. How could I do that? What do you mean, just by doing it, that's all? Well, take me. Do uh, you think I got confidence? Sure. Well... That's where you're wrong. See, I just act like I got it. But let me tell you, boy, days when, I, uh, when I'm tired and when the curve ain't breaking, I'm scared to death, boy. I just don't admit it. I'll get in there and hitch up my britches and I'll spit. Well, here, and here's the trick part, see. Whenever you're batting or pitching, either one, all you got to do is sort of sort of crowd, crowd in there, you know, and look fierce. Now, that's the whole trick, and it works miracles. I couldn't do that, Arthur. Why not? Look, half the people in this whole world are nothing but country boys like you. And uh, the other half are country boys from the city. Come on. Get over there. You're, you're up at the plate and you're batting, see? They're just country boys like me or else country boys from the city. That's the way. Okay. Come on, now get mad about it. No, Bruce. Scrooge up your face a little bit. Get mad. I... Matt, more. More than that. More! That's the way! That's the way. Look at him, Holly. See, look at him. Look how fierce he looks. Do I, Holly? Do I look fierce? Oh. Ferocious. See? Now, that's the whole trick. All it takes is confidence. I guess them peanuts done the trick, all now, right. Now, listen. Now, listen. What did you want me to remind you of? Now, you're going to start out with an absolute minimum of 26000 and hold it there until they bring their absolute maximum up to 19000 Hey, what would you say if I... I don't know. Well, you do what you have to do. Fishing pier, hookworms for sale. Wigan, this is Bradley Lord, calling for Mr. Moore's. Can you come over to the hotel right away? We want to discuss your contract. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there, but, uh, uh, just, uh, hello? Look, you tell Mr. Moore's that I want to have Dutch there, because I got to talk to him. Dutch? He doesn't have anything to do with discussing money. Look, I know that, I know that, but we aren't even going to get to the money part until... I get a special clause in my contract, and that's what Dutch kind will of have clause? To... Well, I'll tell you when I get there. It's out of the question. I never heard of such a thing. Are you trying to be funny, eh? What, what? Now, let's be calm, gentlemen. It's perfectly <laughs> obvious what he's trying to do. He's simply using this clause as a, a lever to get me to raise my absolute maximum figure. So let's cut through all this bargaining back and forth and save ourselves a couple of hours. Now, the final amount I'm prepared to offer you, Henry, is uh, 19500 And it's twice as much as he'll ever be worth. Well, in the first place, Mr. Moores, uh, I consider that figure a personal insult. And in the second place, I mean, even when we do get around to discussing the money part, I'm going to have to raise my absolute minimum figure about $1,000 every time Mr. Bradley Lord opens his mouth. Uh, <laughs> Bradley, get some coke. Now, look, about that clause, I'm uh, not... What is the uh, all of a sudden piercing your Siamese tweet and twin brother? A roomie's a roomie. All right, okay. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry if it sounds crazy to you, Dutch, but that's the way it's got to be. See, whatever happens to Pearson happens to me. Any other way around? Traded? Sold or whatever. And whatever deal under the sun, we've got to be tied together in a package. You know, I think he really means it. I know he means it. Well, it's up to you, Dutch. Well, just tell me this. What am I supposed to do for a third-string catcher, huh? What, what? Suppose I get rid of Pearson. What have I got left? Piney Woods? Oh! He's so wild and crazy, I, 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 I can only play him on days he comes to a census anyway. But so far, I don't know whether he's got any. I, I don't know, I don't know. When I, when, when, when I stop and think about it, I'm liable to wind up using Pearson more and more. He's dumb, but not crazy. It's okay, then. You'll do it, huh? Oh, no, 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 Arthur. I'd like to, because I need that arm of yours badly, but... 
I can't have nobody's contract telling me how to run my ball club. And there's no point wasting any more time. I'm very sorry. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, listen, uh, Henry, uh, suppose, uh, suppose I give you my word. Uh, would that be all right with you, Dutch? You won't have anything to do with it. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Moores, but I want it in writing. Does he owe you money? Is that it? Uh, wait a minute. Now, uh, how would this be? Uh, suppose I mail you a letter, Henry. That way you'll have it in writing, which is what you want, and it still wouldn't be in the contract, so that clears you, right? Uh, what do you say? Well, that's fine by me. Dutch? Well, if I, if I only knew what that angle was. Well... You will, Dutch, sometime. That I promise you. Well, I'm 53 now. I'll be hanging by my thumbs till I do. Okay, okay, you win. I temporarily sent him a letter, but I don't know nothing about it. Wonderful. Bradley, remind me to get rid of that piney woods the first thing in the morning. Every cloud's got a silver lining. Bradley, bring me the contracts. Oh, motorcycles. That's all I need, motorcycles. Here we go, Henry. Wait, no, wait, where's my letter first? Oh, uh, sure, Henry, just as soon as my lawyer gets back from vacation. Well, you can trust me, Henry. I'm gonna hound you, Arthur, day and night until I find out what this is all about. And when I do, if it turns out to be anything to hurt my ball club, you just watch your step, Arthur. This is the United States Steel Hour. Now let's join Mary Kay and Johnny. Let's take a walk through tonight's set. It's interesting, isn't it? Looks like we're walking right through an impressionistic picture at one of those modern art museums. Oh, but it can't be because here's a real casement window. And it's made of steel. Actually, this was put up to show how beautiful and practical steel is around the house. Steel, too. Now, supposing you're planning to remodel. Or maybe you're building right from scratch. Steel windows like this will do a better job for you because steel is so much stronger than other materials. And it's easier on your budget. And you can get steel windows in such a wide range of sizes. They'll go with any type of house. Even an impressionistic house like this. You know, I get the impression that it's cold out here. Hmm. You better come in, Johnny. All righty. Now, that brings us to a very important point. When it's cold and snowy and the wind begins to howl, what does the man of the house usually do? Well, <clears throat> if he's sort of let the cold weather creep up on him and uh, his windows are the old-fashioned kind, then he has to hurry over to his neighbor's house, borrow the ladder, then struggle with the ladder, which is quite a job in itself. Then he has to take the screens down and then try to put the storm sashes up. Every year, the same thing happens. It's all right, honey. I was just demonstrating what can happen if you have old-fashioned storm windows. But the man of the house knows how simple it is to change from screens to storm panels if they're made of light, strong steel. And they'll never warp or swell. In fact, his wife can even do the job for him while he's finishing the sports page. The storm panel fits into the window like this. They're easy to remove and easy to install. They keep the warmth inside and the draft on the outside. So when it does turn cold, there you are, in your warm, cozy home, paying less for fuel bills, protected from wind and weather by strong, economical steel. Which gives me the impression that even in a blizzard... Yes, even in a blizzard, only steel can do so many jobs so well. Well, um, a four months zoomed by, and I still hadn't got that letter from old man Moores, uh, who's a genius. 
if you ask me, in the art of stalling. And uh, the reason I found out he was stalling is he was just waiting for Dutch to find out first what the whole thing was all about. In fact, they even hired a phony detective. But uh, one thing that I'm glad about, and that is I never let a peep to nobody. Now, maybe you think that's not such a big thing to be proud of, but you try it sometime, keeping a secret like that, especially uh, how it got later on with everybody hating everybody else. But uh, anyway, what I got to show you is one day in Boston when, uh, when I was working against a real classy kid named uh, Mirtha, and uh, he'd been fogging him in all afternoon like we had holes in our baths. What's the matter, Sid? You didn't read the papers today? Shut Come up, down there. Boy, he sure burns them in. I just talk out, Sid. Not in the mood? He's not in the mood. Hey, right. Hey, what are you talking about? That was a mile wide. What are you, blind or crazy? I bet I could hit him. You know, Sid is four up on Babe Ruth. Did you hear me tell you to shut up down there? You want to rag somebody? Rag them out there. Oh, that's right, boys. You're not supposed to get Mr. Goldman all worked up. He's got to concentrate. I told you, Franny. All right, sir. Just leave me alone, will you? Can't you see him while I'm watching what's going on? According to my book, I can't hit his fastball, but I sure can't wail his curve. Well, I'd rather see you wail it than just talk about it. Hello, Sid. You thinking? Will Sid Goldman be the one to finally top Babe Ruth's record? Oh, yeah, boy. Just wait him out. He ain't got nothing. Last time he threw me a curve after two strikes and he missed the corner. Then he threw me another one just a little in closer. Hey, hey, look. What, what are you mumbling about? Uh, can't you pay attention? Yes, sir. a boy. Wait him out. Make him put it where you want it. Sir, you hit for Jonah. Come here, Jonah. <laughs> He's putting Brady in. He's the new Sid Goldman Brady is. Hey, Brainy, clobber one. They're just country boys like me or country boys from the city. Brainy Bruce Pierce will be the one to break Babe Ruth's record. Youth wants to know. A line drive right past the shortstop. About as clean a single as you'd ever want to see. But uh, not Bruce. See, he couldn't leave well enough alone. And a minute later, he loused up all the good he'd done by stealing second base, which is fine when you're supposed to. But he'd done it without getting a sign from Dutch or from nobody, which is the one thing really makes Dutch a wild man about, uh, even though Bruce got lucky and made it. You got a couple of them, right? Yeah. What? Poor Sid, he played the whole game, he didn't get a single home run. Not Sid Goldman. Yeah, what will the papers say, huh? Let it drop, Come on, you guys got to stand there all you. day? Racing for the moon. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, break it up, break it up. All right, Pearson. Here we go again. What's the runner's sign for stealing, huh? What, what? Walloping your toe with the fat of the bat. Uh, very good. Did you see me wallop my toe? No, sir. Oh, well, uh... Probably he thought he seen you, Dutch. Who asked you? I'm talking to him. I just stole. Uh, what? what, what, uh, what uh, uh, well, probably uh, he, he, someone else was playing around with a bat. Probably I might have been doing it myself. I'm talking to Pearson! I figured the pitcher was easy to steal off, so I'd done it. Yeah, well, so, why, 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 I, I was watching him all day Tuesday, and I seen how he looks at a runner. If the runner's leaning forward on his forward leg, he figures he's bluffing, and he doesn't pay him any mind. But if he's leaning backward on the other foot, he holds him close. All right. All right. Who told you this? Hey. Next time you figure out something, you tell me about it, not Pearson. On a stack of Bibles, I never heard of it till this morning. Well, just watch your step. That's all. Could it be that you're actually wising up after all these years? Hey, don't, don't get too smart all of a sudden. I'm liable to drop dead from shock. Hey, <laughs> what's that little secret you got locked in your head, huh? Well, what secret is that, Dutch? Okay, it don't matter. In about an hour, I'm going to have a little surprise for you. Ah, don't push me tight! Hey, hey, hey break that up! I'm not crazy, I'm not! I'm not Babe Ruth! I'm Sid Goldman and I'm sick of it! Now leave me alone! The next guy mentions Babe Ruth, I'll part his hair with a feather in the chest! Try it, baby! 
Let's get to it. You're crying. Quiet! Quiet! Give me that bat. Quiet! Well, well, it finally happened, didn't it, huh? I seen it coming a mile back, and I'm here to tell you it's going to stop right this minute. Any club that don't pull together like a club and sit down like a bunch of separate guys ain't going to win no pennants. Ain't going to wind up in no first division. Ain't going to do nothing. But cut your own throat. Look, I'll do my job the best way I can whenever you want to work me. But nobody in this world will get me to light this dirty crumb. So find me all you want. Hot dogs. You're a bunch of hot dogs. Hey, look, buddy, why don't you drop dead? You know, you've been playing by memory for years. Okay, okay, okay. Keep it up. Just keep it up, keep it up. I'll go get a taxi and you get dressed, huh? I gotta take a shower. Oh, Bruce, what are you talking about? I got it. They'll well, think it's funny if well, I... you get dressed and I'll get a taxi, huh? I can. I've gotta act like nothing's wrong. I'll get a taxi. Now, watch it, stupid! A real example of the new-looking ball players. What do you say, Brainy? How tall? Everybody's a ball player. Now listen, you lay off of him. <laughs> What's the matter with I you? Stop, said, stop ragging him, Goose. Oh, come on now. Can't a guy have a little fun? Keep his spirits up. He's dying, Goose. Yeah, dying. Yeah. He's sick, Goose. He's dying. You, you mean dying? Like what, soon? They give him about six months to a year. And look, if Dutch finds out about this, he'll get rid of Bruce in about two seconds. Yeah, he would. So nobody knows, huh? Just me and you. Well, only us will ever know. Well, I've finally done it. You know, right from the, from the very beginning, I was scared I couldn't keep my big mouth shut forever, and sure enough, the first tight squeeze, I had to let the whole thing out. I wanted to go back, you know, and, and, and tell Goose that it was all a gag, that I didn't mean it, but I don't know. Everything just about seemed as, as hopeless as anything could seem. Arthur? I'm not talking to you. What time is it? It's night time. I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, I guess you must have, since you've been snoring like a train engine. Is it late? I don't know. It's about 9 o'clock. Oh, I thought it was late. Look, Bruce, are you going to sit up in that miserable chair all night? I like it here. Oh, sure you like it, because you're not supposed to. I mean, you're supposed to call a doctor, no. You're supposed to eat something, no, but... Just give you one stupid thing you're not supposed to, that you like. Don't you want to answer it? What for? I don't know. Look, Bruce, you can't just sit there shivering. I'm going to call a doctor like I'm supposed oh, to. Arthur, no. I don't want you to. Well, look, what's there to be afraid of? You don't have to be afraid. Because I know what he's going to tell me. And once he tells me I'm told, I can't make out I'm not told. Don't you know what I mean? Until he tells me, I just don't know. Shut up, will you? What do you want? Wigan, get down here right away. Bring Christian with you. Well, uh, he's not here, Dutch. Well, get him. Well, I don't know where he is. He went out somewhere. Well, get off the phone and get down here. Bruce, look, I'm just going down the hall for a minute. I'll be right...
Don't bother to sit down. You're not going to be here that long. Remember that little surprise I was telling you about? Well, here it is. A full report from the detective bureau, which is the reason why I got Mr. Moores all the way down here from Detroit. Where's that kid? Wait, 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 wait. What's his name? Piney Woods. Did he get here yet? Last I heard, his motorcycle broke down. He called collect. Well, track him down. Look, I don't see how you can do that, Dutch. I mean, unless you want to change the rules overnight, you can't carry more than 25 men on the team. Your roommate is through. Cut loose and fired from this club, and I'd do the same to you if I didn't need that left arm of yours so badly. Bradley, get here when I need you. Well, I, look, I always thought that a verbal agreement was a, was, a, was, a, was, a, was a legal agreement. Do you have anything in writing? Surely you don't expect to hold me to a thing like this in the face of all we know. Well, I was always taught where a verbal agreement holds quite a bit of water when you get to court. Uh, sh sit down, Henry. Uh, Bradley, get him a coke or something. What are you trying to do, ruin me? Suppose he gets sick in the middle of a play and costs me a ball game. Now, Henry, I want you to know I feel very sorry for this boy. It, it's really a great tragedy. But I can't keep a man on this club who's liable to die any minute. And you know that. Now, don't you, Henry? Be reasonable. Well, I don't know. I mean, here's a guy who's dying, and, and the only thing that he wants his last few months is to, uh, is to sit on a hard wooden bench and maybe once in a while get up to the plate and take his swipes at a baseball. But I, I don't know. I guess that's asking too much. Oh, wait a minute, Henry. I, I don't want you to go out of here mad. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Moores. I am mad. And I'll probably stay mad for some time to come. Well, I, uh, I had to walk around for a couple of hours. But the big problem was how to tell him. There you go. Hey, you go. That's all the hustler. Hey, the hustler. The hustler. Hey, the hustler. Hey, the hustler. Well, I guess I will since I live here. What's going on? We're celebrating. So I see. Bottoms up for author. Hey, hey, bottom my bottom, bottom is up. Man, hey, you your bottom. Come in, baby. Now, whose birthday? They made a mistake. They thought it was my birthday, so they brought me a surprise party. That's off to birthday. My birthday's in June. That's off to June. Don't let it ring. I've just been ringing you all night. We yeah. don't care. Sounds like jingle bells. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. That's off to Jingle Bell. It's just probably somebody telling us to shut up, but who needs them, right? <laughs> right, right, right? That's right. right. Nobody has let us will ever know, huh? Oh, well, I, I didn't tell nobody, honest. Well, Only Horace, he don't count. He's my roomie. It don't matter now. Howdy, partner! Piney Woods is here! Well, I, I just signed in next door. I heard noise. Knew it must be you all. Well, come on in. You know everybody. Join the party. Yeah, come on in, Piney. Yeah, Piney, Piney baby. Get in here. Well, what are you? A cowboy now? What happened to the motorcycle? Well, it broke down. I'll be going through Texas. So I decided to be a cowboy instead. You come all the way by horseback? No, I flew. <laughs> I don't know why they sent for me, but they sent for me, so here I am. Oh, well, they probably sent for you to uh, water the coyotes and keep the rustlers out of Brooklyn, huh? <laughs> well, I reckon I could. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had it very long. That's a real one, isn't it? Yeah. How about that? That's real... off the sick call, then. Come on, then. We're celebrating. Celebrating? What are you celebrating? We have won a game in five straight. Celebrating? Hey, uh, would anybody mind who get personally mad if I answered the telephone? Yeah. That's good. Wait, wait. You laid into that. Was it high and City pound. What? I'm a papa. What's up with this? A girl, eight pounds, three ounces, 19 inches long. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. How's Holly? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much. I'm a daddy! Genius at work. Go, Piney. As I walked out in the street of Lorraine. 
Oh, now, what kind of lullaby is that? Oh, now, don't swing. Well, now, it's the only song I know. I only got this thing last week. Now, wait a minute, man. That ain't the way to That explains everything. Else. Here, now, no, 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 no. More genius. I'm a papa. I, I got a, a baby girl, eight pounds, three ounces, 19 inches long. That's great, Art. That's what I would want, the little girl. Or else a little boy. Happy birthday to you! Push the before somebody gets hurt. Come on, give it to me. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not in the mood to see anybody with a bullet wound. Well, I don't know how that got there. It must have jumped right in. Yeah, and then the belt just jumped around his waist. Yeah, the hat jumped right on his head. Frame up. <laughs> I've been frame up. What's the matter? Ain't the switch on the wall a good enough way to put out the light? Bradley, go downstairs, head off the police and the house detectives. Tell them it was all an accident, but it's under control. I'll pay for everything. Hey, Ugly, yeah. yeah. hey, did you shoot a gun in the war? No, sir, I played baseball. <laughs> yeah, well, she was in the war. Take this out and empty it, will you? Where? <laughs> hey, who do we play tomorrow? Boston! At Boston! Yeah. Uh, I ought to find a lot of you. But I'm not going to. <laughs> Get out of here! Get out of here! Let's go! Oh! <laughs> so I said, I thought you said they were all killing each other, huh? <laughs> Happy birthday, Pearson. Come here. About Pearson. Uh, forget what I told you, okay? Oh, I mean, if he, if he wants to stay with the club, it's so... Well, after all, we give you our word, didn't we? What are you standing here for? Go inside and write him up that letter you promised him. Happy birthday. You know what, Arthur? What? They are all country boys, just like me, or all country boys from the city. I think you'd better call that doctor.
Well, we took him to the hospital, and he stood there for a long time, and we finished out the season without him. I was his pallbearer, and two other fellows from the Creighton Box plant and some town boys in Georgia, and that's all. There was flowers from the club, but no person from the club. They could have sent somebody. The last thing that he said to me was in a hospital when he said, Bruce, I mean, Arthur, would you, would you send me a scorecard from the series? Would you probably remember we wrapped up on a Sunday with me working? Well, I took the scorecard home with me and I tossed it up on a shelf and I left it lay. I mean, you know how things are. You keep putting it off and you keep putting it off. Till one day it's too late. I mean, wouldn't it have been simple for me to have mailed it one day and instead of writing another page in my book, couldn't I afford the stamps? I don't know. I guess I'm no better than the rest of them. Bruce Pearson was not a bad fella. He was no worse than most, and probably a lot better than some. He wasn't a bad ball player, neither, when they give him a chance and they laid off him long enough. I don't know. From here on in, I rag nobody. Slowly play the dead march as they carry me along. Put bunches of roses.